Hey guys, in this video, you're gonna to get to see our buddy Tom. Tom has an awesome 1957 Chevrolet Corvette and it is bad to the bone. So stick around, you're about to see it right now. Guys, welcome back to this episode of After, After the, the Smoke, Smoke Clears. Clears. I'm Levi and I'm Mark and we're here to talk to you guys about cars. We're all about car guys and how awesome their cars are and uh, we're gonna talk to you today about an awesome 1957 Chevy Corvette. Awesome car. You know, you use the word awesome. It's a one of a kind car. It's beautiful, the color is beautiful, the interior is beautiful, the restoration on it is beautiful. Everything about this car is just unbelievable. You guys who live locally maybe have seen this car at car shows, and if you haven't taken a really, really close look at it, you get to see it today. Yeah, Tom, Tommy, everybody, Tommy, he put together one of the most awesome versions of an old school, I could, it's a hot rod. I yeah. mean, there's no other way to put it. It's got dual quad sticking out of the hood. He's got a, a removable hood. Uh, he does drive it around without the hood, which is cool. He does drive it around with the hood. It's also a convertible hard top, so he can pop the top off of it. I mean, it's got ginormous big wheels in the back and uh, tires with the uh, pie cross edges. I mean, it's really, it's just the epitome of cool. Very cool car. I just love <laughs> how the interior flows in this car. What I didn't like is where the steering wheel sits because I couldn't get in the car. It like hit me like right here, it was unbelievable. But this is the ultimate cool car. Yeah, I think my favorite thing about the car is the color and it is actually called a red color but it's really orange. Um, it's not hugger orange, it's a little brighter, maybe more of a reddish orange, but uh, with the white cove in it, the antique white cove, I don't think you can find a cooler car. This thing is just amazing. I've always looked up to this guy because he's kind of, the guy that's at a car show is more calm, uh, more reserved, uh, he's not as loud and boisterous, sweet guy yeah, um i look guy. up i always i look up to tom and uh tommy's a great guy yeah we um, liked him the minute we met the guy he was just very welcoming having us into his garage got a cool garage too and uh well you know what let's stop talking about it and we'll just show you here it is My name is Tommy Kirkland. This is my 1957 Corvette. In high school, the uh, every kid wants a cool car. And uh, unfortunately, my first car was not a cool car. It was a 1962 four-door Ford Falcon automatic, and uh, but it got me around for quite a few years. And uh, as you know, as when you're a kid or even now, you think a car is uh, uh, like a property that you're going to sell to move up to the next car. After the uh, Ford Falcon, I had a 1965 Chevelle. It was an SS true SS car, 327 four-speed. And of course, I had to put a tunnel ram on it because that's what I do. And uh, so it was, it was a, it had a 48 rear end in it. And it was the uh, fastest car in Joliet for a little while, light to light. But uh, you know, I went from that, uh, moved into a 70, uh, 70 SS 396 Camaro, which is a really nice car too. Had some nice cars, but uh, eventually, um, my brother saw this car setting on uh, Broadway at Aguizio Motors on the street. He called me up the next day and says, hey, it's a pretty cool car. You might want to go look at it. So I did. And uh, talked to him. Ends up the uh, Aguizio Sons had this car, drag raced it, had a big block in it, blew it up, put a small block in it, and stuck it on the car lot for sale. So they're, you know, young and dumb. So 
show up the next day and bought it for what at the time was a pretty good amount of money, but uh, you know, I wish I could buy a few more today for what I paid for this one in 1972. But uh, yeah, it's been uh, in the family ever since and evolved and uh, enjoy driving it. That's, you know, it's, it's my baby. Originally, the cars came with the 283 and 57, and it was the first year for the 283. This car now has a 327 in it, which is a, three, a 63 block out of a Chris Craft Cabin Cruiser, marine block, and um, all the machine work was done over in Indiana. Bill Sontag actually assembled the engine. So, uh, but yeah, it's uh, got the uh, Edelbrock tunnel ram, Holley carburetors, the usual go fast stuff. I estimated 450 horse, maybe a little more, a little less. Um, but it, it, it runs pretty good. The uh, Kragers all the way around, uh, 15 by fours on the front. Um, Skinny tires, coker tire, back, the uh, pie crust cheater slicks, the old Firestones, those are from coker also. Um, 15 by eight, uh, deep dish Kragers on the back. It's got the Muncie uh, 21 four speed um, that was rebuilt by a guy in Crest Hill, Bill, if you guys might know him. Uncle Bill. Uncle Bill. And uh, over the winter, I, this year I put in a uh, winner's quick change rear end, which the uh, old one is still over in the corner. Um, but uh, it's uh, kind of a different rear end for a full bodied car. They sell a lot of them for street rods, but rather than put a four nine inch in, why not do something different? So it's got the, uh, the winner's quick change in it right now. Interior wise, it's a stock. Um, reproduction interior. The chrome has been redone. This is all original stainless steel. Just uh, I learned how to pound dents out of stainless steel and polish that so that's uh, that's all original there. But the uh, converted over to an alternator from generator that was, uh, uh, was a pretty good strain of all the electronics with the uh, old alternator in it or generator in it. So it's got a one wire power master, does the job. In uh, 1957, th this is a removable hard top that I have on the car right now. In 57, you buy the car new, you had an option. You could have convertible top or the hard top. You had your choice when you bought the car new. You could buy either one and buy the other one as an option. So if this car was bought with the hard top, you could get the convertible top as an option. If it, was born, if it was made with the convertible top, you could get the hard top as an option. So um, maybe I would say half of them had both. Most, you know, the other half just had one or the other. But uh, this car, as an option, had a power convertible top in the 57 Corvette which, you know, is kind of, you really don't need a power top in a 57 Corvette. But this one, it was an option in this car. So um, when I started tearing apart, the, uh, the slave cylinder for the top was still behind the passenger driver's seat. So, so I know it was a power top car. But uh, yeah, there were a lot of options, you know, that people don't realize. The uh, windshield washers, you know, it's got windshield washers and 57 standard equipment. Well, not standard, but it was on this car. And of course, there was no power pump to pump the fluid up. There was a rubber ball on the floor. You pump it up with your foot and it would pump fluid through here and up through there. And there was a bag on the, the wall. You remember, you remember seeing those. But the, uh, yeah, so it was, uh, 57 was the first year for a lot of stuff. First year for fuel, in fuel injection, first year for the 283, first year for four speed. You know, so it was a, it was a pretty uh, remarkable year in the Corvette history. Color wise, um, this color may look orange, and it is orange, 
but the, but the color is called Venetian red. And the cove and the interior parts, those, that's uh, polo white. So it's Venetian red, polo white. And uh, I would say well over half the Corvettes in 57 were this color combination, just because retail red, <laughs> you know, everyone was a red Corvette. But uh, yeah, this is, a, this is the original color for this car. It shows a little different because the original paint was lacquer. This is a clear coat, base coat paint because you can't hardly buy lacquer anymore. So uh, it, it, it shows a little different, but uh, that, that's the original color for it. Originally the car was pretty rough body-wise. It was okay, but not perfect. The gaps in the doors and stuff were really bad. Um, so when I, we built this garage after I retired, first thing I started was doing body work. Did all the body work myself. I, when the body work was done, I was going to have a guy, one of the better known painters in the area, paint it. And uh, he told me that he would not guarantee it because he didn't do the body work. He'd have to do all the body work over again. So I told him, forget it. I spent two years on the body work. I'm not going to have you grind it onto the garage floor, you know. So I said, well, how bad can I screw it up? <laughs> so I, uh, the guys down at Arnie's Auto Body talked me through it, and uh, I painted it myself right where it's sitting right now. I built a little paint booth in here. As a matter of fact, you can still see the, the wood in the ceiling where I ran it up and uh, put a big fan blowing out that door and uh, painted it right there. My name is Tommy Kirkland. This is my 1957 Corvette. Had it since 1972. It's the coolest damn ride in Joliet. This is it. And that's why I'm a car guy. All right, Levi, I got to admit that was probably one of the coolest cars that we've done an interview with. Tom is a great guy. What a friendly guy. Um, tell me, what, what did you like most about his car? I love the story behind the car. I love that he always liked the 57 Corvette. Yeah. And I love that he found it back in the early 70s. And, uh, you know, he kept it and drove it, you know. That's the cool thing apart about the whole car is that he actually drove it and later on did a restoration on it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I know that we say we love every single car that we do an interview on, whether it's a, a two-door <laughs> uh, Mopar from the mid-70s back to, you know, clutch, some of these- Clutch McGee's clutch uh, Yugo. Absolutely, we <laughs> love everybody's cars, but yeah. um, this car is, it's the epitome of 1950s, uh, you know, street cruising cars yeah and uh to have one and have dual quads on it i mean it is just such a sharp car the original 327 not the original but a, a 327 in it yeah and uh it's got a great big cam and it sounds amazing amazing yeah. um the best thing I, I i love seeing him at car shows i see him all the time he and i always hit it off and talk and uh, he's friends with a lot of different people that i'm friends with i really enjoy tom he's a great guy i think it's probably should probably win a, a trophy at almost every show it goes to yeah i agree you know you <clears> talked <throat> a little bit about the color earlier and i forget exactly what he he called it but yeah the red with the cream inside the cove it just really makes for a beautiful car uh, the sound was incredible my favorite part of it was like you said the story the story how he painted that car right where it sits. I mean, he still had the two by fours on the ceiling where he draped down the plastic to, to paint that car. But his garage was like spotless. I mean, it's unbelievable how, how nice and clean this guy's garage was. So he does a great job on his cars, does a great job on his garage. And we got to take a look at his wife's El Camino. I forget the year of her El Camino, but we're going to do that in our future show, aren't we? That's right. So that's going to be in a future episode of After the Smoke Clears, and Tom's wife is going to come out, and she's going to do an interview with us. Cool. I'm excited about that. 
first woman actually to come out and do an interview for uh, after the smoke clears, which is really exciting. Very so we'll give you a little sneak peek of that right now, but we're not going to give too much of it away. That's right. And please don't forget to subscribe. You know, hit that subscribe button. It really is important to us. We've hit halfway uh, on the. Uh, we're halfway on our goal. We're about five hundred and I think six. Uh, actually, four hundred and ninety-six away from our thousand goal as of today. We've got five hundred and four subscribers. We are so proud to be along this far. We're so proud of everybody who subscribed to us. We hope that you guys will continue to watch, continue to share continue to leave comments, and continue to go to our thousand push to a thousand contest video where you can enter in to win a huge prize package from After the Smoke Clears. Absolutely, and guys, spring is here. Uh, guys and gals, yep. spring is here, and we're gonna be doing more of these outside now that the weather is gonna be a little bit better. Cars moving instead of just sitting in a garage, <laughs> you know, it's really gonna be fun. Yep, and we're gonna be able to get out and do some cruises and some more car shows, and yeah. you got a lot to look forward to. So stay tuned, and uh, we appreciate everybody that is a viewer of our page.